Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Egressing from an endangered military aircraft is the last possible action a pilot can take to save his life. Through decades, aircraft manufacturers have designed and developed an emergency escape using ejection seats. This technology was developed by the end of World War II, and the first aircraft equipped with an ejection seat was the German fighter Heinkel HE-219. Before the appearance of this technology, the crew was equipped with personal parachutes, and the only way to escape in case of emergency was to bail out from the aircraft. A safe and controlled bailout required the aircraft to be above a certain altitude and below a defined speed. Otherwise, the egress might be dangerous and even impossible to be performed. There are just a few manufacturers of ejection seats in the world today, being led in the Western world by British company Martin Baker, who has delivered more than 70,000 ejection seats to over 93 air forces around the globe, capturing more than 50% of the market and saving 7,677 lives until today. An ejection seat is a very complex piece of equipment designed to be the last resource for a pilot to save his life. But at the same time, it can become extremely dangerous if not operated correctly and on time. A late decision to eject might not be compensated by the technical features of an ejection system, leading to a fatal ending. The anatomy of a modern ejection seat features explosive devices such as a catapult or rocket catapult in the back of the seat, a rocket motor under the bucket, and vernier rockets for stabilization purposes. It is also equipped with a drogue or stabilization parachute and the main parachute for the crew. The seat also has passive protection elements such as leg restraints and arm restraints, head and neck protection, and even an inflatable collar. The seat also serves as the interface between the pilot and the aircraft for oxygen and communication systems. Finally, the seat is provided with an emergency survival kit under the bucket, which, depending on the operation, may contain a hydration kit, survival tools, matches, first aid kit, sleeping bag, and even an inflatable raft, among other elements. Once the decision to eject is taken, the pilot pulls the ejection handle, and an automatic ejection sequence takes place within milliseconds. The ejection handle, also known as the D-ring, is painted in yellow and black, and is located between the pilot's thighs. Some ejection seat models feature an ejection lever on the side of the seat and other designs are equipped with an ejection activation handle above the pilot's head. Just after the ejection is initiated, the arm and leg restraints are activated, preventing the risk of injuries to the pilot when exiting the cockpit. The aircraft canopy is shattered or jettisoned depending on the aircraft design, and the ejection catapult violently impulses the ejection seat along the rails and outside the cockpit at 50 feet per second. The drogue parachute is deployed for deceleration and stabilization, and the pilot is separated from the seat. Later, a barometric-controlled automatic system will deploy the main parachute below 10,000 feet of altitude, leading the pilot to a safe landing. Thank you. 
The ejection envelope of the ejection seat technology ranges from 00, zero that is 0 altitude and 0 air speeds, to 2.5 Mach and 55,000 feet of altitude, depending on the seat model. The ejection seat technology has a high rate of survival after an ejection. However, an ejection is very far away from being a roller coaster ride. During the ejection, the pilots are exposed to extreme accelerations up to 10 Gs and violent decelerations when exiting the cockpit into the free air. These tremendous forces may cause injuries to the arms, shoulders, legs, neck and spine with permanent damage consequences. Scientists at the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base simulate these ejection forces on dummy pilots with the help of the vertical deceleration tower. Dummy pilots are intensively used during the development of an ejection seat or the adaptation of an ejection seat to a particular aircraft. One of the most impressive tests consists in accelerating a front section of the aircraft under development on a rail sledge impulsed by rockets, equipped with the instrumented ejection seats and dummy pilots. In this test, dummy pilots are ejected and landed with parachutes, and all forces and accelerations suffered by the dummies are analyzed to reduce the risk of injuries to real human pilots during the ejection process. The ejection seats are subject to maintenance, as any other component of an aircraft. Typically, an ejection seat needs to be mechanically inspected every two years by mechanics with the appropriate training on that specific model of the ejection seat. In parallel, the rocket motors and other pyrotechnic components must be replaced according to their expiration date. The drogue stabilization parachute and the main parachute of an ejection seat must also be inspected during maintenance. Both parachutes are extended and inspected to detect rips, entangled lines, or any missed attachment. This demands about 10 hours of inspection work. Finally, both parachutes are repacked and reinstalled on the ejection seat. In the remote possibility of the ejection system malfunction, the pilot needs to be annually trained on how to egress the aircraft manually, taking into account airspeed and altitude, and deploy the personal emergency parachute. The pilots are trained in ground schools and simulators to handle parachutes and deal with problems like line twists, partial inversions, and line overs. Some simulators incorporate a virtual reality system to augment the realism of the training. The pilot's qualification on the egress technique is a requisite to keep them allowed to fly. The safe ending of an ejection process is the proper landing of the pilot on the ground or the water. If the landing happens to be on the ground, the pilots are trained in installations like the lateral drift trainer, where they learn to touch down and roll to absorb the energy of the impact, minimizing the risk of personal injuries. Landing on water needs the pilot to be prepared with a different set of skills in order to deal with dangerous situations such as being pulled on the water surface by a parachute inflated by the wind or diving away from underneath an open parachute that could become a deadly trap for an untrained crew. Bring your arms up as a T. Typically, this training is performed in the safe waters of a lake with the help of jet skis.
The military forces have dedicated teams and equipment deployed after an accident occurs and recover the aircraft wreckage at remote locations or even from under the water using cranes, slings, and even saws to cut the airframe in pieces if necessary. An exceptional team of this kind is the Crash and Salvage Division of a U.S. Navy aircraft carrier, like the USS Gerald R. Ford. This team specializes in firefighting a crashed aircraft on the carrier's deck, rescuing the pilot and preventing the eventual fire from reaching the rest of the aircraft on the deck. This team utilizes a self-propelled dedicated A-S32A-35 aircraft salvage crane, usually called Tilly, to remove the damaged or disabled aircraft from the carrier deck with the help of slings and a crash dolly, and move the load to a safe parking area. The Tilly is designed to operate even in inclement weather, and with the ship rolling and pitching during operations. The ejection seats brought into aviation an improvement in technology to save lives, when the only option is to leave the aircraft immediately. However, this escape is inherently dangerous in all of its phases, so they are trained to perform the egress following a carefully analyzed process and to land safely in different environments. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.